Hi friends, Will Davis Jr. here with good news today. I pray you're doing really, really well. Um, always, please send cards, comments, and questions and complaints to seniorpastor.acfellowship.org. All right, let's continue this walk here in this garden with our friend Adam. Genesis 2, verse 16 says, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, You shall surely eat. He commanded him, Eat from the trees. You shall surely eat from every tree that's in the garden, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. So review, um, he's on Maui, Adam is, and God says, have at it. If you see a tree, eat from it. Like, knock yourself out. It's out there, go for it. But one. It's interesting that God gave Adam one prohibition, and that became the stumbling point for him and for Eve, because that's what the devil will use, as we'll see in Genesis 3, to tempt them. So by way of review today, for the most part, is a bit of review. Why is there a tree there anyway that can get them in trouble? So the tree of knowledge of good and evil represented two things. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, first of all, represented things that are too lofty for humans and things about which humans should not be aware. It was the tree saying, look, there's there's some stuff here that's real in the universe that you don't need to know about. I need you to know that it exists, but I don't need you to know the content. It's really not for you. It's for God. I, I put it here in the garden because I want you to be able to understand there's a whole lot of chapters that have been written that have nothing to do with you, but you need to know they're there and that they're profound. And there's some things that just belong to God. And if you were to be exposed to them, they would overwhelm you. It's the whole battle of God versus evil and God versus Satan, which has been won. But as you remember, they lost their innocence, Adam and Eve did, when they partook of that fruit because they suddenly knew things only God should know. We just weren't cut out to be this aware of evil. And we are, and it's killed our, our race, basically. And so God says, I need you to know there's some things that are only for God, but I need you to know they're there. So that's the first reason it's there. Second reason it's there is choice. Um, he says in Deuteronomy, today I set before you life and death. Um, God needed Adam and Eve to have an option so they could choose to follow him and not be required to follow him. And all the people who get mad at God and saying, if he just hadn't put the tree there, well, they'd be griping today that we weren't free. <laughs> If the tree's not there, we're not free because freedom requires choice. God wants you to serve him and follow him and love him um, out of obedience and love, not out of forced submission. He doesn't do that. So the tree needed to be there so Adam and Eve could choose to obey him. They can choose to say, and to their offspring, look, eat from any tree you want to, but this one's off limits. We're going to honor God by keeping it off limits. He had to let them have choice. And they failed in that choice, as would any of us. So today, I want to remind you, that there are some things that are really only fit for God. He said, live quiet lives, work with your hands, be childlike, have childlike faith. Let me worry about the significance of evil and the complications thereof. You keep your hearts pure and simple and trust in me. Live like little children. Pray that for yourself. Pray for that childlike mindset that isn't all wrapped up in the affairs of God. Let God handle things and do that through prayer. Secondly, choose every day to follow him. Choose every day to reject that knowledge of good and evil and to reject the partaking of sin and the taking for partaking of for, forbidden fruit. Reject the forbidden fruit. And make your goal every day to honor God with your words, with your actions, with your heart, with your attitudes, your behaviors, everything, and reject that tree that would lead you into sin. It's everywhere, and we don't need to do it. Choose life. Choose God. Choose freedom. Choose love. And let God be the God of the stuff that's dark. He can handle it. Next devotional, we're going to talk about um, what God meant when he said, you will surely die. Because they ate from the fruit and they didn't. So what was he talking about? Thanks for joining with me. We love you, Lord. Thanks for this time. Bless my amazing listeners and readers today in Jesus' name. Amen. See you soon.